In this video, we will talk about painting evening light with watercolor. I will be working on an urban landscape. My inspiration for this painting was Child Hassam's landscape, Rainy Midnight. I wanted to recreate a similar mood and lighting. I found this reference photo that I thought was perfect for this. Of course, I'm not going to paint with oils like Child Hassam, but I will paint with watercolor. I had some success painting floral compositions loosely, so I wanted to bring that feeling and that approach into landscape painting or urban scape in this case. In this video, I wanted to share four tips that I discovered were important while I was painting this particular subject matter, which is urban landscape in evening light. I started with the drawing. I didn't want to transfer the photo. It's a slightly different proportion than my watercolor paper. So I decided to just draw it and make the necessary adjustments to fit this composition on my size of paper. I'm using a 300 pound watercolor block. In the video description below, I left you a link to another attempt that I did at a loose landscape painting French town of Jiconda with watercolor in a loose style. To create that effect of dusk, of evening light, especially with the snow falling, I will of course have to start wet on wet. So I'm going to give my paper a light wash of clean water using a large flat brush. I don't want any puddles or anything like that. I just want paper to be damp. I'm actually going to pick up water in a few places. I want that building at the end of the bridge to be my focal point. So I think I will need some harder, let's say, edges there. And also the street lights. of course, I want them to leave as white paper as much as possible. So I'm going to pick up water there and leave the paper dry. The first thing I figured out will be important for an evening landscape when it's dusk or even for early morning light. It will be important to stick to a limited palette, but also to a neutral palette. When light is low like that, a human eye can't really distinguish very many colors. All the colors become kind of neutralized, especially on a winter day like this. The landscape is pretty gray as it is, and in low light it will be even more neutral and subdued. That's why I'm starting with the wash of indigo by Daniel Smith and I'm adding just a little bit of cobalt blue to the sky. The sky still has a little bit of color in it. I prefer indigo because it's a dark intense color. I can build up pretty good intensity with it, but it's cool. It has a lot of blue in it. You don't want to use warm darks like um, burnt umber or Mars black. That will be way too warm, especially in the background because that will invert your picture, it will push the background forward, it, it will be hard to create the depth of space in the painting, the perspective. from those street lamps is very warm. So I am using new gamboge for light areas. So my second tip would be to create that contrast between the dark or the dusk, I should say, and the light to use warm colors for light, but to use it sparingly. It's not the sun and uh, the light from those street lamps is very localized. So they, they need to be just a few areas of warm light in the painting. It will contrast with a mostly cool neutral palette of the painting nicely, I think, and it will help us to create that illusion of warm electric light. For midtones, I'm neutralizing that same new gamboge with my indigo. It creates kind of neutral gray-green. This photo that I found online really resonated with me. It, it reminded me of my hometown and I loved the contrast between subdued subtle grays in the shadows and the really warm orange light of those street lamps. And I thought it would be interesting to try and capture it in watercolor. A little bit of Scarlet Lake into my 
make sure to paint those paving stones they look very orange in the light and again my indigo is the color that i chose to mix with other colors to get all kinds of neutral mixtures the first wash is very loose i did start building different animal elements of the landscape but since my paper is wet i am not giving definition to any details yet lightly those warm areas around the street lights just to distribute my colors and see what the painting is going to look like approximately still working wet on wet i don't want this to turn into a collection of architectural details or a study in architectural perspective i want this to be a loose watercolor painting and this first wash always looks very amorphous and it doesn't look like much but I think it's important to give each painting a chance and keep working on it and try to bring it to a successful completion because especially if we use a little bit of opaque media we can make watercolor work. darken those trees in the background that everything looks kind of middle tone the only darks in this photo that i see are the red iron fence and the lampposts but actually those trees are pretty close in tone to the railing so i feel i need to darken them a little more and i also i'm using a dry brush to move my pigment around and also to verify my drawing because colors were all floating. I want to check my uh, drawing as well, check my perspective. My first layer is dry. You see how much it lightened. I have a bit of a blossom going on in the center there, but it's okay. It will all get covered by subsequent layers of watercolor. In this next step, I am going to switch to a dagger brush it's much easier to draw straight lines with the dagger brush i found and i am going to start verifying all the details in my painting that first wash was just a rough distribution of color and tone and now i need to give my painting a little bit more precision a bit of advice when you're trying to draw a curved line especially a long one like this one it's always better to try working with straight sections not try to make it a smooth curve because because that will be very hard to do with the brush especially it will be hard to control the brush but if you work with sections it will be much easier to make it go where it's supposed to go so you see what i'm doing now this dagger brush is also great for trying to create texture a bit of dry brushing creates that um, pattern on the on the concrete that uneven color that we see on the concrete of the bridge and i'm using my indigo to draw all those dark lines that I see in the in the fence in the reference photo. You watched my video when i was painting the roofs of jagonda you will know that when painting architecture like that it's very important to be selective about details and to paint them as abstractly as possible 
if we want to stick to our loose and expressive style of painting. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not painting every paper in the bridge. We don't really see them. We see them only in light and where they're in shadow, we don't really see the seams. So that's what I'm doing, kind of simplifying the form. And of course, accurate drawing is very important. So I'm trying to keep those lamp posts vertical and the iron fence posts vertical. And later you will see, I will have to make corrections to them anyway. That's the tricky part in painting urban landscapes because there are so many straight lines and you have to keep them straight and at the right angles. Otherwise, everything will start falling over and the painting is just not going to look right. Part of the appeal of this photo to me was that I thought it would be a chance for me to use Sinlia's Royal Blue that I have on my palette. It's a semi-opaque pigment, beautiful color. It really gives unique touch to watercolor painting but it's very tricky to use. So I thought this subdued color palette with a little pop of Royal Bloom should work. So I decided to give this subject matter a try. I think I'm going to use my Royal Blue for the focal point for that building at the end of the bridge. The tree trunks are actually lighter than surrounding vegetation, so I am going to paint them negatively in just a small area. Again, don't want to do too many details, especially in that background area. Just a hint that there are some tree trunks and branches in the background. In the past, I had a lot of trouble painting distant trees like that, and I think it was because I tried to give them too many details. In this painting, I create them with a loose wash just to get the tone right and then add just a few details with that uh, dagger brush. Just correct the edge a little bit and throw in just a hint of some tree trunks and branches. the same for the lamp posts because there's so much light there we can't really see the details so I need to reflect that in the way I paint them so I am just hinting that there is something on top there and um, of course giving a little more definition to the posts themselves they have very warm glow so that will be one of the few areas of warm color that I will use in my painting so basically it will be on those lamp posts and a little bit on the fence and you see the vertical fence on the left that concrete fence even though i did use some blues and yellows and oranges there i neutralized them all with my indigo <music> I 
saturate my focal point a little bit with royal blue maybe distribute it a little better in the trees there they look very cool there in the distance those bare trees maybe a little bit of royal blue in the pavers in the shadows on the on the fence good idea if you're using a certain color as an accent color which is royal blue in my case it's a good idea to distribute it a little bit throughout your painting in, just in small areas I'll let the second layer dry my next step is finding all the darkest darks balancing the details and I will use for that a color pencil this is a Prismacolor set they're just regular color pencils pretty soft nice saturated colors they will help me to get those straight lines where they need to be much easier than trying to do it with a brush and they do blend with watercolors pretty well so they don't stand out they don't look like you used mixed media for your painting but they're much easier to work with than a brush obviously they give you a lot more support to your hand and a lot better control there is an indigo pencil actually in the set so i'm using that to verify the details a lot of small details that um, those fences are pretty intricate with a lot of details in them you can darken certain areas where i don't have enough tone the only thing about using color pencil on watercolor paper especially on 300 pound paper is that it disappears very quickly so i always keep a sharpener pencil sharpener handy because i have to do it several times throughout the process of working on the painting so just finding a few more details in the pavement in those fences but concentrating those details to the darkest areas where i have maximum contrast and also to the foreground here i have a ruler in my left hand i have it handy because i can see that um, that fence especially on the right is a little wonky so i'll have to make corrections there let's find some more darks a little more precision with a small darker brush this time still using indigo that's my chosen dark for this painting keeping my palette very very limited because like i said in the dusk and low light or before sunrise we do not see a lot of color and the colors that we do see are neutral and warm colors i only concentrated to a few areas where there is light and my fence is way off that's what happens when you work with a brush with watercolor a brush is hard to control so i'm going to straighten those um, fence posts and we'll pretend that the ones i painted don't count we'll just um, make the correction and it's easy to lift watercolor too indigo is not going to lift completely but i can lighten it considerably if i need to with a stiff brush this looks much better the fence is a lot straighter now even just a couple of brush strokes as long as you have a hint of a straight line it will be fine you don't have to overdo it overwork those details let's darken the spaces between the bars tonal relationships are extremely important to make our painting look right and you see i am not painting each bar between those main fence posts because people will understand you know that there is something you just need to give them enough information to get their imagination going my painting is almost finished i'm just doing final verification of all the details and all i have left is adding the highlights this will be another important thing that i discovered when painting this landscape is that we have to be very selective when adding highlights when there is a lot of light a lot of sunshine for example everything is brilliant everything is lit and there are highlights on everything when the only light is basically coming from those three lamp posts and the ambient light is very low the highlights will be very concentrated so obviously the lamps themselves the street lamps themselves have to be pure white because that's the brightest light in my painting and but the rest of the areas that they cast light on will be very limited this subject makes painting light a little trickier too because there is snow it kind of throws off the balance a little bit but still if we're selective and also if we vary our highlights if we don't make them all super white but some of them can be a little less opaque a little more subdued and some of the brighter the ones that are closer to the light then i think we will achieve the realistic effect so again i'm using my dagger brush i'm using white artist gouache this is m grams that i always use in my paintings to very selectively add the highlights to my painting i am going to pick out a few trees 
they're not in the background they're kind of in the middle ground i try to paint them negatively but i think they need they can stand out a little more just for visual interest and maybe a few branches on the right here they have some snow accumulating on them and they're also close to the lamp posts so i'm going to pick them out with white out of my background i also want to create that halo that i see around those lamp posts so i am mixing a little bit of lemon yellow into my white to create that warm halo around the, the lights. I can also use it for some of the branches and maybe for highlights on the fence. You see the, the light there is not pure white. It actually has quite a bit of yellow in it. And that's what I was talking about when I said some highlights can be more subdued. So mixing a little bit of yellow or blue watercolor into my white gouache and making it not pure white, but slightly more subdued will help me vary the intensity of those highlights and create more realistic light in my painting. I think it's interesting that we can recreate the light of different intensity in the painting, but just very simple means by balancing our tonal relationships, dark mid-tone and light areas, and by the amount and intensity of highlights that we add. It, it seems like magic, but there is actually logical things that you can do to get these results. Last touch, I really love that falling snow that I see in the reference photo. I'm going to take my big dagger brush. It's very floppy, so it's good for sprinkling diluted gouache. So just a few sprinkles to create the falling snow. I think it adds to the mystery and um, charm of this composition. The snow will also be more visible around the street lights. So I'm trying to kind of do some targeted sprinkling around those. You know how those uh, street lights pick out the snowflakes. Let me know in comments what you think about the results if I manage to recreate that mysterious dusk of a snowy day in the city. I hope in any case you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one here on Tamirap Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!